We have this story from the New York Post. California's $20 fast food minimum wage balloons menu prices with some chains increasing costs by nearly $2. I just, all, all these laws do is literally just destroy your economy. Okay. So uh, let's see what we, what we have. Do they have the photos here? There was, uh, there was one photo. I thought they had it where the prices were, uh, here we go. Oh, okay. So they do, they, they do have, do they have the double menu? Okay, here we go. So this one's Burger King. A Whopper meal was eleven eighty nine. What is it now? Twelve forty nine. A Texas double Whopper was fifteen. What's a Texas sixteen eighty nine? Whoa, went up by a dollar eighty. That's crazy. And then you look down at In and Out, and it was a double double. It's a double meat, double cheeseburger. Five dollars sixty five cents. Now it's five ninety. They have just increased the price of all the food because you passed a law saying you got to pay more. You didn't change anything. In fact, the only thing that changed was they don't have the, the additional money in their coffers, so they fire people until they can get there. Mm -hmm. I talked to a guy, an accountant. New Jersey was raising the, the, the uh, minimum wage, and it was going up like 50 cents. And he was like, it's going to go up 50 cents, and then six months, 50 cents more. We're talking about in a year, this, this is going to be a 10% increase. Now, imagine you're a business and you have thin margins. Your, your margins could be 10%. And now you're seeing a 10% labor cost increase. So now your margin's 2%. Of course, you're going to raise your prices. But if you raise your prices, then people aren't going to shop there. They're going to say your prices are too expensive. He said, when they put in the, the, the increase, I think he said something like 20% of my clients shut their businesses down. Yeah. And it's because in their bank right now, they have $10,000 and they got to make payroll and the money comes in and when the money goes out and there's a little bit on top. They, they, they set up a rainy day fund. And then when they do this dramatic change, they're like, we don't have the extra thousand dollars to make payroll. What do we do? Shut her down. Take the money that we have left. We'll keep it for ourselves and we'll 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 try and start something else. Understaff. We so we had yeah. a bill. We had a bill, Virginia House of Delegates, raising the minimum wage in Virginia statewide. So keep in mind, the the Loudoun County is the wealthiest county in America. Oh yeah. Loudoun County is the wealthiest. Lee County, Virginia, the median individual income is eighteen thousand wow. dollars a year. So they were going to change the minimum wage for all of Virginia to $13 and 50 cents an hour. Drastic increase. Cause right now it's like 11. Because um, Loudoun County can afford it. Oh yeah. Loudoun County doesn't care. In fact, all the legislators carrying and cheering this on are all coming from counties that are significantly wealthier than, than the poorer counties in Virginia. And when you point this out, and this is, this is, this is one of the things I hate when people get up and you actually, you're supposed to explain your bill. They don't explain the bill. They give you their hopes and dreams and aspirations for what they hope their bill will do. And so this bill is going to lift people out of poverty. This bill is going to, I said, you know what this bill does? Like technically, does everyone want to know what it legally does? You will make it illegal to offer someone a job for $13 and 49 cents an hour or less. That's all the bill does. You hope it will do all these other things, but what it actually does is make it illegal. Think about that for a second. You've got a county where the, the median individual income is $18,000 a year. We're making 12 bucks an hour is a pretty good gig. Nope, yeah. illegal. You can't do it. Why? Because a bunch of representatives who know this much about economics uh -huh. and who know it's not going to actually affect them get to go on TV and talk about how much they care about the working poor right. when in reality they just cost their jobs, they cost their hours, or they made everything they're going to buy more expensive anyways, which will eat into the the supposedly pay increase that they they got. Who who was the lady who said 50 bucks? You saw that in California? Oh, yeah. She's like, we'll make it $50. It's just like, okay, you'll just eradicate every business. Make it a hundred or you hate the poor. Yeah, That's rest right. in peace to all the franchisees that could never afford that. It's yeah. going to make the business, t the, the business itself might make money, but every franchisee is just like, do well, you, there goes my business, bye-bye. Do you guys uh, remember in, uh, was it 2019, 2019-2020 uh, uh, cycle, Bloomberg, I think it was, it was this, when Bloomberg was, he put a half a, half a billion, mm -hmm. and then that woman was on TV and she was like, he put 500 million into this race. That means he could give every American a million dollars. And then, and then the anchor was like, wow. <laughs> yeah. Let me pull that up. Yeah. Team, no, I don't think that's how this works at that, all. That math doesn't math. <laughs> Slow down there. No, it is interesting because I think you're right. It's, it's a political talking point for someone who is in a district where their constituents aren't going to feel the difference, right? Like if you're representing the wealthiest county in America, yeah. and now we can all say, oh, great. So 
we have raised the the minimum wage, you know, it's mostly <clears throat> to pat yourself on the back and pretend like you're doing a good thing. Yeah. We, well, and, and the problem is, is that the, because of this narrative, because of the advertising, because of the fact the media doesn't do their job, I had a room full of students coming to my office and they were FFA students, right? Future Farmers of America. And they said, what's, what's some of the biggest legislation that's going to affect, you know, agriculture? I said, <laughs> the minimum wage increase. Mm -hmm. And I asked these students, they said, how many, how many people in the labor force, what percentage of the labor force do you think makes minimum wage? And the average estimate they gave me was 50%. I said, it's less than 3%. And out of those 3% making minimum wage, the vast majority of them will not be making minimum wage six months from now, as long as they can keep the job. Mm -hmm. Because that's how upward economic mobility works. Yeah. But if you take them out of the labor market at the very beginning, because now they can't get a job or they can't get sufficient They're hours. They're in the market. They can't go up. They can't go up. Right. Yeah. But that's okay. They got a welfare check for that. So, so it was uh, Mara Gay from the New York Times talking to Brian Williams. This is the New York Times. So the. Uh, Why did they fact check that? I believe the uh, the clip has since been deleted by everybody. I don't. Yeah, it doesn't exist uh. anymore. But uh, circled the wagons on that The one. quote was. Let me see if I can pull up the quote. Uh, during her discussion with Williams and former New York City uh, Bloomberg's campaign, blah, blah, blah. But then she suggested that Bloomberg could have given each of the 327 million Americans $1 million and still had money left over, which would have been better. Uh, better use of his cash. Yeah, no. And then, uh, oh, was, what was this? Uh, it was, it was, was it, oh, Brian Williams. I think he brought up someone saying that and said, it's an incredible way of putting it and gave her part of greed. It's an incredible, incredible way of putting it. It's true. It's disturbing. It does suggest what we're talking about here, which is that there's too much money in politics. <laughs> These are the people that are at the New York Times and MSNBC. And so if you wonder why it is they lie and they're dumb, well, it's because of the people they hire. Good New York gosh. Times editorial board member saying it is true. He couldn't know. He could have given everyone, I think it was like a dollar twenty seven yeah. mm -hmm. or something like that. A dollar. They couldn't even buy anything off the dollar menu now. That's that's too. <laughs> there is no dollar menu. There's no dollar menu. Well, it, we we always we always kind of in a dark humor way. It's these minimum wage increases are should be called the no kiosk left behind bills because the, the more difficult you make it to hire somebody, and it's not just the the wage component. It, it's all the different rules. Beating this guy. Oh, sorry. Oh, it's all the different rules. It's all the different restrictions. Every time you do that, what you're telling small business owners is we're going to make hiring someone a bigger liability for you. So find something else. Let me just play this clip for you. But you see it as a possibility if he wants to spend a billion bucks beating this guy, he could do it. Absolutely. Um, somebody tweeted recently that um, actually with the money he spent, he could have given every American a million dollars. I've got it. Let's put it up yeah. on the screen. It, when I read it uh, tonight on social media, <laughs> it kind of all became clear. Bloomberg spent 500 million on ads. U.S. population, 327 million. Uh, don't tell us if you're ahead of us on the math. He could have given each American one million dollars and have had lunch money left over. It's an incredible way of putting it. It's an incredible way of putting it. It's true. It's disturbing. It's true. It does. It does suggest, you know, what we're talking about here, which is there, there's too much money in politics. Um, and it makes it difficult because what we want in where are these these people vote. Wow. <laughs> they vote. They have TV shows. She's right. She's an editorial yeah. board member of the New York Times. Oh, uh, well, heaven well, help and us. And they mentioned in our first article that I guess afterwards she tweeted like, buying calculator BRB, which yep. I appreciate the self-deprecating humor. On the other hand, you went on national television and were like, and this is true. I read it on the social media. Like, <laughs> And they theme. all, like the producers didn't catch it. Yeah. There's like two producers that has to go through before it gets to Brian Williams. He reads it on the air and he's like, wow. And she's like, yeah. This really fits into our narrative nicely. It's crazy how that worked wow. out. <laughs> That's just so crazy that we live in this reality. Uh, yeah. But but these are the people fact checking. So don't worry. But like, it's, it's gotta, disturbing and true. Yeah. I want to go to the reality where they live underground and are super high tech and they have like high speed magnetic rail trains and stuff. I'm tired of this junk reality where idiots run the show. <laughs> I don't know. Not everybody's an idiot that's running the show. I just see the idiot. It was a, a dollar fifty three per person. 500 million divided by 327 million is 1.53. What could you buy in today's economy for a dollar and 53 cents? Arizona iced tea. <laughs> yeah. Can you now? I feel like that went no. up too. It, it's a dollar 29, I think. Oh, man. Yeah. Arizona. Well, you buy Bitcoin with left it. owner. Yeah, you could buy a dollar 53 of Bitcoin, <laughs> which is like $2.00000000. Like it's remarkable. I do think uh, you guys talked about kiosks, I was just in the bathroom, but uh, this whole raising the minimum wage is is just bringing in the age of automation employees yeah. are going out yeah the minimum wage workers on its way out well we, we were talking about it before I, I think okay again 
don't quote me on this, but I'm pretty sure I read something where that $20 minimum wage in California, that there was a special thing that was put in there about baking bread. And it, and if, I think it was like if you bake bread on site, yeah, the, you're not subject to the same minimum wage laws. And oh, oh, by the way, Panera gave a ton of money yeah, to Gavin Newsom. The, the CEO of Panera is a huge Newsom donor. Yeah. And this was the only way out. In fact, the, the bill got proposed and they got brought back to the table. They were like, except for places that you bake your own bread, yeah. you don't have to do this. Keep in mind, Panera once opened up a shop. I think it was, was it in New York City? They opened up a store somewhere where you just paid what you could. Right, and it was going to be this very. It, yeah, it was. Is that, is that store still so open? It is not. Interesting. It, it, it turns. It turns out. It turns out. A lot of the the hipsters going in there decided they couldn't pay anything for yep. the sandwich they were getting. John Bon Jovi did that. Actually, had a restaurant where it was a pay what you can thing, and it just kept seeing the meme over and over. I don't know if the restaurant's still open. I should look into it. Oh, so uh, the the latest reporting is that Panera will raise their wages to twenty dollars an hour, but that that the story from Bloomberg, yeah, how Panera Bread ducked California's new twenty dollars minimum wage law. Yeah, oh, I love that they will do it, but they don't have to. Okay, they don't we'll have see. to, but we'll see. no, who are they going to hire? I mean, yeah. if, if you're a, an yep. employee that's looking for jobs, are you going to go to Panera where you don't get paid? Like, If you bake the bread and sell it as a standalone item. Mm-hmm. Oh, I, I was waiting for like McDonald's. Watch McDonald's Burger King is like, hey, would you like a roll with your yeah. meal? Like that's <laughs> they're going to they're going to have like one and little stove in there. That, but, but think about it. They cook one, you know, double arch roll every morning. Yeah. And it's 10 bucks and then they're sold out. Yeah. And oh. then they. That's all they got to do. It's broken along with the ice cream machine. (laughs) Uh, Right. Bon Jovi's restaurant is still open because of the JBJ Soul Kitchen. It's open. It's a community nonprofit restaurant. Pay what you will. Yeah. If people can't pay, they invite them to pay what they can. And what if that is nothing? Yeah. I think then they feed him anyway. It looks like it's a nonprofit, so (laughs) maybe it's fun. So it's a tax write off for him. Yeah. It's exactly what that is. It's not a business opportunity. No. Necessarily. Not supposed to be. No, it's just supposed to help. How those go. Nonprofits are great business opportunities. Yeah. Yeah. Thanks for watching this clip from the Timcast IRL podcast. Hang out with us live Monday through Friday at 8 p.m. and become a member over at Timcast.com for uncensored members only shows exclusive. Thanks for hanging out and we'll see you all next time.